Um, and finally, we've, I'd, I'm really delighted to introduce Associate Professor Vinicius Cavalieri, who is also a physiotherapist. It's a bit physiotherapy heavy, but actually we invited them because they're um, professors of allied health and, and broader kinds of roles. He's got over 15 years of experience in clinical research. He's an allied health research director at South Metropolitan Health Service and an associate professor at the Curtin School of um, Allied Health. His main field of research is exercise training and promotion of physical activity in people with chronic lung diseases such as lung cancer and chronic obstructive pulmonary disease. So we look forward to a few comments from you, Vin. Thank you. Thank you very much, Kathy. Can, can I say that you pronounce my first name and surname perfectly? And not many people can do that. <laughs> That's awesome. Thank you. <laughs> so I've done one good thing tonight. That's that was, excellent. <laughs> that was great, Kathy. Thank you. Uh, look, thank you so much for the invitation to participate in this session. Uh, it's a huge privilege to be part of such a great panel and talk about integrated pathways in allied health research. So this may be what a pathway for a clinician researcher career may look like for many of us. And we know that there are many barriers to a clinician researcher career. And we also know that clinician researchers prefer roles that are embedded within the health service. But this very recent uh, paper from, from Caitlin and Elizabeth, you know, talked about some of those barriers uh, for a clinician researcher career. The fact that uh, research may not be always valued uh, in a clinical environment. And I'm sure that's not what happens at Sue's uh, department. And it's amazing to have uh, heads of service like Sue. Uh, lack of incentive for research, lack of research roles, and current challenges that impair the viability of a clinician research career. So there are many other barriers that uh, we can list here. But you know, for people who try to navigate through those barriers, um, and overcome some of those barriers when they engage in clinical research. And they complete um, a research degree, it could be a master's or a PhD. What commonly happened at the end of that initial stage in their clinical research career is that they either divert to a full-time academic role that may or may not have um, a research component, or they go back to full-time clinical practice. Um, you know, very recently things have been changing uh, with more opportunities for a clinician researcher career, but I think in allied health we're in infancy stages, uh, especially here in WA, I've got to say, uh, but th there is definitely hope. So what I'm going to be talking about now is some of the activities um, that have happened here at South Metropolitan Health Service in Perth, um, for an integrated pathway in clinical research. So we believe that um, a pathway for clinical research career can start at the recruitment stage. So when, when, when we're interviewing both junior and senior people for um, roles that we have, clinical roles, and we ask about research skills, research engagement, interest in research or evidence-based practice. I'm not saying that this happens across all the nine departments within our allied health service, but, but definitely uh, in some of the departments. As soon as they are a new staff, they go through the new starter program in allied health, and it's managed by the allied health uh, education director. And I've got some time there to talk about our research vision, the strategies for research and the research support that we offer as a service. So some, of, some of those initiatives are research education and training with short video lessons, face-to-face -face sessions, one-on-one -on -one sessions, and research mentoring, which is driven by the service, so South, South Metro as um, a HSV. Also, um, opportunities to apply for protected research time, and this is part of the building research capacity initiative that's supported by the Chief Allied Health Officer here in WA. And just for you to have an idea, in the past two years, which is the time that I've been with South Metro, um, we've been able to support 311 research days and, and 40 staff. And that's a great initiative from the Chief Allied Health Officer. 
uh, partnership with, partnerships with um, academics, um, obviously, as Sue mentioned, you know, supporting with honours, supervision, masters, PhD supervision, but also in applying for grants and, and getting research started, but also um, QI project. Interdisciplinary collaboration as well across the nine areas. We've got some senior staff uh, in some of the uh, se senior research staff in some of the departments, which are, were really helpful. And collaborations with industry as well. There's good collaboration in audiology and, and other departments. So in the past two years, we were able to offer a couple of PhD scholarships and master scholarships of so four PhD scholarships and one master scholarship for allied health staff to enroll in PhD and masters. And then very recently, I'm very proud to say that, that we, we've announced our inaugural postdoctoral uh, uh, clinical research fellow within our service, uh, which is basically protected time to do research post uh, PhD. And very soon we're going to be advertising for our clinical research roles now uh, within four different departments in our allied health service, and they're all joint positions with Curtin University. So this is what uh, the career pathway is looking like in our service at the moment. Obviously, um, there are lots of things that can be added to this, and obviously we're focusing on. Uh, I'm focusing my energy in 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 other things as well to to be added to that career pathway. One of them is financial reward and career progression, which obviously uh, will make those careers more appealing. Um, as I talk to you, there have been changes that happened now at an individual level with all those programs that we've been supporting at a team level, department level, now allied health service level, the health service uh, provider level, but also health department level. And there's, there's a lot of momentum towards clinical research, which is really great. But in talking to, in conversations with the Chief Allied Health Officer, we realised that uh, for financial reward, we need to engage the professional bodies um, and the, the health service unions to try to make this more attractive for uh, a, a, a clinical research uh, career pathway. So this is, this is where I'll probably be focusing um, a lot of my energy in the next couple of months, uh, trying to make sure that people are rewarded and have um, career progression within the health uh, service. Well, I try to be very brief and I'm more than happy to take any questions. Just would like to thank again the invitation to be here, all the partners for, for this collaboration between Curtin and South Metropolitan Health Service, and also say that I've learned so much from the Australian Allied Health Professors Group in the past two years. Uh, this group is, has been led by Andrew Bailey, uh, we've put a position statement together on the value of allied health research. If you haven't had a look at that position statement, there is a QR code there. And thank you so much for your time. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Ben. And um, 